Hello everybody. Today we are going to do a haul slash get ready with me with some of the new items that I've hauled today. So first I'm going to go over the items that I'm not going to be using and then um, everything I'll be doing my get ready with um, I will tell you if it's new or not because I didn't get like a full face of new makeup in the past few weeks. Okay so I took a trip to Sephora and at Sephora, I think the only thing I'm not going to be using today that I picked up was this little kit by Kat Von D, this little duo. I love the tattoo liner. I have them everywhere. And also in here was Studded Kiss Lipstick in Magic. And I do not have this color, so I picked this up. They also gave me a free sample of Jimmy Choo Illicit while I was there. I actually already own this perfume, um, but I like these little samples to carry in my purse. Drugstore. I picked up the new Wet n Wild Au Naturel. Um, there will probably be a future video on this. I want to compare it to the old um, Fergie eyeshadow palette that they had. This is an exclusive at Walmart. Um, I have not seen this at Target or CVS or Walgreens. Picked up the e.l.f. Illuminating Palette. I had actually tried to order the blush palette, the contour palette, and the illuminating palette off their website. Uh, before Christmas and they only sent me the blush palette and I just got a letter saying that the other two were out of stock. So probably a month ago I found the contour palette in stores and now I found the illuminating palette in stores and I really want to kind of piece them together and make one palette that I can travel with. I picked these up from Marshalls. I just posted a blog post on how I get rid of my facial hair. I actually remove all the facial hair from my face um, and in between doing like a full removal I'll use these type of blades to kind of um, shorten the hair um, to keep the foundation looking smooth. So I know um, a couple other YouTubers have done videos about how to properly shave your face so um, you, know, you can look at that. Maybe I'll do one in the future. But these are my favorite, the kind that kind of fold down. Um, they also make the ones that are just straight. I ordered the new House of Lashes lash case. And in mine, right now I just have one pair of lashes in there. And in the bottom, it stores the travel glue. And I have a small little pair of tweezers in here. I also plan on putting like the travel size Kat Von D eyeliner will be going in here as well. Also from House of Lashes I picked up when I got that travel glue it came with the travel glue in black. I have not tried the black yet and I picked up House of Lashes original lash glue. I picked this up at Walmart while I was grabbing the Wet n Wild eyeshadow palette. I love using the bar version of this to clean my beauty blender and um, quick cleaning makeup brushes. And so I grabbed, they were actually out of the bar. I wanted to pick up a backup and I picked up this. I have not tried it yet. I wonder if the liquid one will work as well for cleaning beauty blenders. Um, I placed an order from Kryolan for some little Dermacolor concealer refills. I picked up a couple colors. This one is D61. I picked up this one as well. This is like a almost white. I guess it probably is white. Um, it's good for mixing and lightening. Also when I ordered from Krylon, I picked up their Dermacolor Fixing Spray. This is pretty serious stuff. This is not an everyday fixing spray. I would not recommend it for every day, but for special events, this is a good one. It is an aerosol, not like a, a pump spray. I picked up two nail polishes out of the clearance section at Ulta. I'm not a big nail polish person. Um, I don't paint my own nails ever. And I picked these up for pedicures. Um, this is Cosmo with a twist. I commonly do, purple is my favorite color. I commonly will do like dark purple nail polish on my toenails. And then this one, I don't know, this just really intrigued me. I don't know what I'm going to use it for. This is Celestial is More. It's just this really pretty like multi-sized glitter. 
not a true silver. It probably looks silver here, but they had other silvers sitting next to it. And when you see it compared to other silvers, you realize this has got more of a, it has more of a nude tone silver, if that makes any sense. I placed an order on the Makeup Geek website when the Manny MUA palette released. I was so excited to get that. That's actually what we'll be using in the Get Ready With Me. While I was on there, I picked up a couple other things I wanted. I was kind of in a hurry because I wanted to check out before the palette sold out. Um, I wanted the contour set, but that was sold out. So I just picked up Bad Habit and that's the Warm Fair contour. I'm thinking that'll probably be the best one for my skin tone and I'll try this out and if I love it, which I'm sure I will, then I'll be ordering the full set when it's back in stock. I also needed to pick up Peach Smoothie. For some reason, I've never had this one. Um, I have the one that's really similar to it. The Beaches and Cream is just a little bit lighter. Um, so I wanted to go ahead and get Peach Smoothie. And I also picked up Poppy because I think this is going to be a really fun color in late spring and summer. Okay, so yes, jewelry magically appeared. Um, I also wanted to clarify something I said about the nail polishes. Um, right now I actually have my nails like undone. Um, I don't ever paint my own nails, A, because I'm bad at it, <laughs> like really bad at it. Um, my left hand looks great because I paint it with my right, and then my right hand always looks like crap. So I either, normally what I do is I get shellac, or you know any form of gel polish done at the salon and right before Christmas I had the itch to do acrylic nails and put on really long um, almost stiletto acrylic nails and then after Christmas was over I had them taken off and I've been in the grow out stage so that's why I have nothing on right now I have been using in the last video you saw I had just literally they were stick on nails um, because those aren't as damaging to the nail bed and I just needed something because I don't ever go without my nails undone until the last month or two. So my nails are almost grown out. Um, you can see you can't really see that curve from where they ground my nail down for the acrylics anymore. So I'll probably be going back soon. Um, yes, my cuticles are a mess. So anyways, I just wanted to clarify that. Um, and my pedicures I normally get done at the salon too. Um, it's kind of a little treat to myself and also just because I'm really bad at it like really really bad at it so that's why I just let the professionals handle that so now we are going to start with the get ready with me and today I'm going to start priming my eyes with the Urban Decay eyeshadow primer in Eden I have lots of problems with my eye area so a little bit about me, my eye area is probably my least favorite. I have very thin skin around my eyes, and so you can see all of the veins that are in my eyelid, um, and that's very hard to cover up with just eyeshadow. It is also the reason underneath my eyes are so dark, um, because you can see all the blood vessels in kind of this eye socket area. Um, it's not quite this thin under the eye, you can't see the actual individual veins. Um, I do have um, filler, derma filler, in the lower eye socket region. Um, this area is actually a little puffy right now because of the filler, um, but this area is normally very depressed on me and gives me a very tired look. So that is why most of the eyeshadow primers you will see me use have some sort of color to them. Um, to kind of help cover up that veining. Um, also a little bit about me is I'm currently, I'm not throwing out things I already owned, but I am really working on only purchasing cruelty-free items. Um, I do make mistakes. I do cave every once in a while just because I really want to try something new, but I'm really trying to focus more on that. Um, we have, my husband and I, have three dogs and a cat, and I can't imagine someone locking them in a laboratory to test on them, so, or any other little critter, because I love all little critter, critters, um, except for snakes, no snakes. Um, so I'm really trying to work on that. It's something I didn't really pay attention to. 
and I think we need to be paying attention to it. I know there's a lot of controversy between the regulations in the UK versus the regulations in China and who can sell what where. And, you know, that's why a lot of the companies aren't going cruelty free because or they they don't necessarily test themselves in their laboratories, but they can't say that they're cruelty free because they have to do third par party testing to um, be able to sell in China. And obviously China has a very large population and is a very big market. So you can understand why big business like Mac Cosmetics and Makeup Forever, um, you know, want to be able to sell in China. So they may not do the testing themselves, um, but there's a lot of people, if you research cruelty free, there's a lot of people that just won't even support a company that sells in China because of the requirement to test third party on animals. So currently the United States doesn't have any regulation whatsoever. You can test, you don't have to test. Um, and there's a, there's actually, well, we won't get into it. <laughs> I am going to be using the Manny MUA Makeup Geek palette. I am really excited about this palette. Um, I'm going to do a, a lot of people are doing looks that have these two colors in them. Um, this is Insomnia and Mars. Understandably, these are very unique colors, and so I understand why a lot of people are doing looks with these. Um, but I actually want to show you this is old school, don't judge me. This used to be my everyday palette. And this was like my go-to. It is old. It is completely broken. This doesn't even attach anymore. Um, I keep it just for color reference. I don't use it anymore because it's way too old for that. Um, but this is kind of like my perfect color combination for my blue eyes. So you can see a lot of those same colors. Um, this is a little more cool tone. Than this one here um, but I'm going to swatch these for you also in this old L'Oreal palette um, they're kind of dried up so you won't see you'll see that the pigmentation isn't that great um, but just for color tone so there are the colors from the L'Oreal palette and now I'm gonna swatch the colors from the Manny MUA makeup geek palette um, that are like they reminded me of it. So when I opened it, I was like, oh, those colors really remind me of that L'Oreal palette. So this first one is this light color. The second one is this color over here. This is a foiled shadow. Next one is this color right here. This is a permanent line color. This is Frappe. And then just because it's the only like dark brown color, we're going to do this one right here. So you can see it's not exact and the pigmentation is at, you know much better on the Makeup Geek palette because it you know it's brand new plus they're just an amazing brand and they have made amazing pigment. Uh, but you can see how the color tone really kind of reminded me of that other palette. Um, you know especially in these lighter colors. Um, the Makeup Geek is to me is kind of like a newer better version <laughs> of my old palette. Um, I do kind of wish this dark brown was maybe not quite as red tone, but I understand why in the sense of the palette, especially with that red Mars color, um, that it has a little bit redder tone to it. Also, something to know about this palette, I read online and it is true. Um, the way they're labeled on the back is they're like directly under. So, like previous colors from Makeup Geek that I know, um, so like I know this one is Frappe. So when you turn it around you know it's on the middle right here and when you turn it around it's on the middle left because it's directly below it it's right here so when you when you read these left to right is not the same as reading them left to right on the back because they're they're underneath so like, oh, Cosmopolitan, Frappe, Insomnia, um, because those are colors that were previously in the Makeup Geek line. Insomnia was a pigment, um, but a you know very famous pigment of theirs. And so this is the first time they've released it pressed in this palette. But you know these three colors are colors that I know Beaches and Cream too, but it's in the center, so that doesn't really count for the underneath thing. Um, so that's why I can tell you for sure. You know this is Frappe. This is Cosmopolitan. 
this is insomnia. So like cosmopolitan and insomnia are on the left hand side in the palette. And then when you flip it over and you're reading the back, they're on the right hand side. So just a little note about this palette because I've heard that there is a little bit of confusion about that. I'm going to start with applying Beaches and Cream with the Wayne Goss 03. I'm going to put that up here in the brow area. It's about the same as my skin tone. And so I'm just placing it there to kind of help finish out getting rid of the color of those veins and so that all the other colors will blend well together. I'm going to use a Wayne Goss 01, oh I'm sorry, 04. I've had these a while and these first ones where they weren't lasered in, it, I kind of have to like get the light right to read the impression. So we're going to go in with Sora. It looks like it has a little bit of a silver glitter in it, um, but you really don't see that on the skin when you swatch it. And I'm going to put that in my crease and blend it up. A little bit more on the outside corner to increase the pigmentation. Blending in circular motions as well as windshield wiper. Now I'm going to take a little bit of frappe. These two are, colors are really close. So you won't see a huge difference, but just kind of adding some dimension. Putting it in just the outside corner of the crease. I'm gonna go in with Aphrodite. Goss 05. This is the original 05. Um, now he's changed it to like a small pencil brush. And this is one of my favorite makeup brushes in Wayne Goss. If you ever watch this video, which I doubt, please, 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 please come back with this. It was already out of stock by the time I found out that they were getting rid of it. And I definitely would have bought like a backup or two of this um, if I had known they were getting rid of it. I've been watching eBay. I've only seen one go on sale. Um, and it went for like way ridiculous price. Um, I'm definitely starting <laughs> to fear the day when this brush needs replaced. So a small blending brush will work, um, but this is definitely my favorite. Sorry for using a brush you can't get anymore. And now I'm really just going to darken up that outside V. 04 brush that we were blending with earlier. Do extra blending. No additional product right now on the brush. Just using what was already on it to help blend in that dark color. Back with the 05. No additional product. That's a dark color so it'll hang out on the brush. And just Just adding the pigment to get a smooth, consistent blend. Now going in with the Wayne Goss 18, it's a flat shading brush, and going in with Luna. This eyeshadow reminds me of, I watch Leanne Says, who is a local Houston YouTuber, and she just got a little dog, and his name is Luna, and now every time I see this eyeshadow color, I think of her dog. He's so cute. Adding this on the outside of my lid and bringing it in towards the middle but not going past the color in my eye. So leaving this inner corner. Excess color off of that brush, same brush, and I'm going in 
I'm going to slaughter this one. Artemis, I think is how you say this color. And I'm going to place that color on the inside of my eye. I'm not going for anything too dramatic today. Flipping the brush over to just kind of blend those two colors. I am just running around town today and going to a friend's house. So I don't want to look like I'm going to the club. The memory card ran out of space and stopped filming. And I didn't notice because I was so <laughs> involved in what I was doing. I used Naked Skin. Urban Decay Concealer and Light Warm for my under eyes and a little bit in my T-zone for brightening. And then I've set it with a mixture of some powders um, that I've mixed up to use up. They're kind of all some powders that I like but I don't love. So I've mixed them all together and I just want to try to hurry up and use them with baking. So that's where that's set underneath. Um, none of those products were new. Um, the Makeup Geek palette is the only thing really from the haul so far. And what I'm going to be using next is the Smashbox Brow Tech Shaping Powder in Brunette. And this is not a cruelty free brand. Um, I believe that they don't test themselves. Um, but I also believe they still sell in China, which is why they're not considered cruelty free. So this is like a little felt tip that has like a fibrous powder and we are going to give this a try. I have my brow pencil on standby if this does not do what I want. I will say what I like about this color so far is that it's very Cool. I have a hard time with brow products. Always want to seem to go a little warm tone and I try to fight the red tones in my hair most of the time. So I like it when I can find a brow product that is nice and cool tone. I'm going to take my Wayne Goss spoolie blend that in a little bit. I feel like it's doing a really good job filling in where I do have hair, but in the areas where I have over plucked in previous years, I don't really feel like this helps build up new brow. So I don't necessarily dislike this product. Um, I definitely could go out like this and be okay with that. Not with the powder, but with my brows this way. Um, I do think I'm going to fill in a little bit with my NYX micro, bro micro brow in the upper part where I normally fill in. I'm really excited for the new ColourPop eyebrow pencils. Um, they're supposed to be coming out on March 10th and I definitely plan on ordering some of those because they are a cruelty free brand plus an eyebrow pencil for five dollars which is probably I'm assuming what they're going to be since most of their products are in that kind of range and we'll see when they release um really excited to try that i do like this next one anastasia beverly hills obviously has a great brow pencil the brow Wiz. I've not tried the brow definer yet. They are cruelty free as well. Pencil is just a little bit more expensive. I don't mind spending money on an expensive product if it's really worth it. Um, but I just really don't know. I mean, I, I will buy the Anastasia one again, um, but this is pretty much just as good. So I don't see spending, you know, almost double for a product that is not twice as good. If it was twice as good, I would definitely be exclusively buying the other one. Brows are on and now I'm gonna do my eyeliner. Um, today I'm going to be using the Clinique one. 
This is the Pretty Easy Liquid Eyelining Pen in 01 Black. Every eyeliner, eyeliner pen like this that you see me use, unless I say otherwise, is a brush tip. I use this one, I use the Physician's Formula one, and I use the Kat Von D one. Um, I got this one just because it was another brush tip, and I will use it up. I do like it. I don't think it's worth repurchasing. I would rather use the Physician's Formula or the Kat Von D for the price tag. Um, my Physician's Formula is like my everyday go-to because it washes off really easily. And then I use the Kat Von D one for like special occasions because I know it has a little bit more staying power. Um, going to be doing a little bit of a cat wing as always. I've been doing winged eyeliner since probably about the seventh grade. It was much smaller back then, but it was still a wing. I like the retro aspect to winged eyeliner. Plus it just really suits my eye color. Er, my eye shape and you will see I use my pinky to anchor so when I start on this side my pinky is on my nose and then when I do on this side uh, most of the time it's like on the side of my head or on my cheek so I'm realizing that I have two clocks in here I have this little one that I picked up in um, Denver Colorado when I was visiting our niece there I found this in like a little antique store there and I really like it and I bought it for my countertop to get ready. And I also have another clock in here. Um, I, I hate being late so there's clocks everywhere. And they're both ticking but like the ticking is off and it's driving me a little crazy and I'm really hoping that you can't hear it. Cause that now that my eyeliner and brows are on I'm going to be trying these new lashes that I picked up so this is part of the haul. I got these at like the local beauty supply um, where they have like supplies for wigs and they have makeup and they have nails. That's actually where I get my stick on nails. Um, these are supposed to have like the tapered ends. So instead of like the blunt cut fibers and they're called Blair by I Envy. I guess it's V Lux by I Envy. And I really liked the little container that they came in. They kind of remind me of the Demi Wispies. I'm to be using um, my favorite little lash tweezers. These are um, the Velour Lash Lash Tweezers. I don't ever really use this to speak of, um, but I really like the shape and the way these grip. I rarely have to trim lashes. I have a very long lash line, um, so I won't need to cut these. Also, a new product that I'm going to be trying is this Lock On Lash Lash Adhesive. Um, I saw in a local makeup artist board that's for Houston makeup artists, a couple of makeup artists that I know or regularly see posting um, rave about this, and so I went ahead and picked it up. Um, I also just recently picked up the House of Lashes glue. I do really like that one. You don't have to wait for it to get tacky at all. Um, so, But I was intrigued by this one because it wasn't something I had ever heard of. And for two artists to both say they love it, it was something I needed to try. So it is black, it is covering the lash band, um, and it has this little brush applicator. I do, apparently this lash glue needs a little bit of time to tack up. So I like to apply my lash glue on the top as well as I like to make sure that there's kind of a little bit on the back because that will be touching your skin as well. There's really not any reason to be getting lash glue kind of on the front. I, was a very I will say about this lash glue that it does not need as much time to tack up as like Duo does. Um, not as fast as like House of Lashes that you can pretty much just apply immediately. So this I think just a couple you know like swish 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 and then you can apply. It does need a couple seconds though. Um, 
hopefully it has great hold. Going back in with my eyeliner and just adjusting and covering the lash band. I also find, especially on clients, you may need to adjust the shape of your eyeliner a little bit after you apply your lashes. Sometimes the glue kind of makes the eyelid sit a little different and you may need to, you know, like here, now there appears to be like a little bit, it doesn't, the line's not quite as straight. Um, it looks like the lash glue's maybe pulling a little bit of that eyeliner down. Um, so you may just need to adjust the shape of your eyeliner just a smidgen. I'm going to blend my lashes with mascara. This is the Lash Perfection Gel by Perfect Cut and Flash, which is black. I like to put my finger behind, and I really just do this when I have fake lashes on, just so I can really wiggle them together and not worry about getting it on my eyeshadow. Huge fan of a ton of mascara on my lower lashes. Uh, back to the whole dark under eye thing. I actually trim my lower lashes to make them shorter because they do get fairly long. And I don't like that all that extra darkness underneath the eye. But at the same time, I don't, you know, want them to completely disappear because then that looks kind of funny too. So this is just the Wayne Goss 22. It's like a brow brush and comb, but I'm just using it to brush those out and make sure that the mascara is evenly dispersed because my lower lashes are kind of thin. Now we can brush off the bake and touch up the eyeshadow. So what I use to brush my bake off is Silver Black Velvet 3025S Jumbo Round Medium. Uh, putting a little bit of the Hourglass Diffused Light Powder on there just to keep from dragging and I'm going to brush that away. This new product that I'm really excited about, it took me a really long time to go ahead and bite the bullet and purchase it, but I got the new Urban Decay Gwen Stefani blush palette. I already have the eyeshadow palette, I got it right away um, when it first came out because it came out first and I really <laughs> didn't need another blush palette, but this is a cruelty free brand and Everybody was ranting and raving about the colors, so I bit the bullet. I bought it. You've seen these before. Nothing too crazy. You know, just nice, pretty colors. I doubt I'll use this really light cherry color that much. It's not really in my normal range. Today, I'm going to mix Easy and Hush, which are the two middle colors, and I am going to be applying them with the Wayne Goss... 14 brush and I'm I like using this brush the first time I use a blush because if it's really pigmented this brush is really good at diffusing it so kind of the first time you're trying something if you're scared of the pigment this is a good brush to go in with or any brush like this type okay so this blush is not like strongly strongly pigmented. I am going to switch and I am switching to the Wayne Goss number 13. It's just a small round brush. Yes I do use a lot of Wayne Goss brushes. Um, I bought them in 2014 at IMATS New York when that Beautylish had the booth there um, kind of presenting his brushes. Um, I've bought all of the holiday brushes as well. Um, the only brush I don't have, I think, is kind of the the white haired, like dual fiber looking one for powder. I don't have that one because um, that's just not a type of brush that I use a whole lot. I love his products. They're really good quality. If you want to invest in good brushes for yourself, I do not use my Wayne Goss brushes for my kit. Um, and I am going to go back in with Artemis, the lightest color, 
and do the inner corner. And also just because eyeliner. I'm just going to drag it up. Make sure that inner corner is really bright. Going back with my handy brush. Knocking this all off. So now I'm going to be going in with the Urban Decay Gwen Stefani Ex-Girlfriend Lipstick. I picked this up when I picked up the blush palette. This is kind of a sheer lipstick. Um, let me do a swatch here for you. You can see it's not like terribly pigmented. So that's why I'm doing several swipes. So yeah, it's really just like a great My Lips But Better lipstick. Yeah, that completes this look. Um, like I said, this is just kind of a, I'm going to run around town and feel a little pretty, but I don't want anything too dramatic because it is the middle of the day and I'm just going to be running around going to a friend's house and hanging out. So um, I think I really like all of the new products. I like this blush palette. They are pretty, but I don't think for every day that I'm going to wear blushes that are this shimmery. Um, maybe because I mixed them together, um, I, I may need to try them one at a time just to see which one maybe really has that shimmer to it. Um, but this is a pretty strong glow to my brush for this time of year. This might be great for summer when you want that glowier skin. Um, I might really like this palette in the summer. But right now, um, where most people it's still winter, it's really kind of spring for us here in Houston. Um, it's been in like the 80s lately. So um, I'm not I'm not here yet. I might like this one better in the summer. I love the Makeup Geek palette. Great job. Um, I know they're out of stock right now, and I do kind of want to pick up another one. Um, I'm hoping they come out with these two shadows as full-time, because right now they're like limited edition for this palette. These two I really, really like, and I really would like to see these as part of the permanent collection. Um, I really just like the packaging. Honestly, I kind of want to buy one of these palettes and peel the label off the back and keep some of them, but then fill in some of the ones, um, some different ones. Like I'd really like to see like a black in here and then maybe a, a cooler brown tone. Um, so if it comes back in stock um, and stays in stock for a while, because I don't want to, you know, take away from people that didn't get their hands on one, I might buy a second one. Um, and kind of make it my own palette because I do, it's dirty because I just used it, but I do really like this rose gold and black packaging and I do really like the Luna and Artemis shadows. Um, so maybe I'll get my hands on a second one. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and like the video below. If you do want to check out more information about me, I'll have links below for my Instagram, Facebook, blog post, and the Belvedere website. I also just did a blog post about one of my favorite little beauty secrets. I do remove all of the baby hairs from my face. And so if you want more information on that, I didn't really think it was worth doing a video. So I just wrote a blog post on it and I will link that below as well. Um, it's really great for giving you that like super smooth foundation base. Um, it kind of gives you that like you know, photoshopped. I hate when people say airbrush because to me, airbrush is a makeup application technique. So I will use Photoshop for when people, you know, like edit photos. Um, so for, it gives you kind of that photoshopped ad look because your skin is super smooth because you don't have any of those little baby hairs on there. Um, so again, it's, it, you know, if it's not your thing, if you think that's too high maintenance, then don't worry about it. Um, but it's something I've been doing for years and I really like how it affects my makeup application. So if you want to check that out, that link will be below as well. Thank you.